Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe and most of all I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video we're going to talk about some Warhammer Age of Sigma rumours that are coming out. Uh, these were first posted on Reddit I believe that's been uh, sort of linked from there from various different sources across the internet from other YouTube channels and from Twitter and Facebook and all of it. It's just spreading everywhere now. Um, and I thought, well, why not? I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think about them, what they are, what it might entail, and what we might see from these things. Now, some of these I do find really promising. Um, they make a lot of sense, and I do feel that maybe this has a shred of truth to it. Now, apparently, the source on this is not going to reveal themselves, but it is a just trust me, I know sort of source, so, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, as always with rumours. However, apparently, this source has a good track record. I mean, that is what it is. You know, it's, it's rumours, it's leaks nothing is true until we see it in the flesh so well worth considering that as a possibility but I always find that these are fun to talk about uh, it's always fun to sort of speculate and talk about what might be coming um, and get those creative juices and excitement brewing inside you so anyway we're going to talk today about some box sets some brand new factions models and some narrative as well about what is in store for the future of Warhammer Age of Sigmar now first, let's talk about a rumoured box set. Now we know the GW loves doing the dual box sets. They've been a common thing in Warhammer Age of Sigma and Warhammer 40,000 for a while now. Um, and they're pretty cool. I mean, I have thoroughly enjoyed Loon Curse and all the other ones that have come out as well. Things like Feast of Bones and Shadow and Pain, etc. Normally these do introduce a couple of new models inside them. However, um, we have been got the rumor i guess that gloom spike gets and beast of chaos will have a dual box set now first of all this makes sense for one thing that beast of chaos are widely rumored as a very soon release in fact they're rumored to be the release this year for the chaos faction now there is pretty much a toss-up between the two potential factions of what that may be but beast of chaos have been strongly hinted as one of the two sort of front runners for that particular faction so this little box set maybe is going to hit the shelves sometime at, before the end of the year. Now, Gloom Spike Gits definitely do need an update for the Battle Tome. There's been another army that's rumoured to be getting an updated Battle Tome soon, probably at the start of next year, then, if we're going by what's going to happen with this box set. Um, whether or not we're going to see new models for the Gloom Spike Gits half, I don't think so, mainly because the rumour is saying that the Beast of Chaos half will be featuring a ton of new models. First of all, we'll have a new Doom Ball and new Bulgore miniatures, along with a new Jabba Slife miniature. Now, this sort of does make sense, if we think back about it a little bit. So, first of all, the Jabba Slife got updated rules in Broken Realms, so they're, you know, trying to sort of push people to go get some Jabba Slives, and they've also, obviously, released the uh, Bulgore box set in Broken Realms. And the Doom Ball is a fine cast miniature, or is he still in metal? One of the two. Either way, he needs an update. And so, we're at a point where, okay, a lot of this stuff needs updates. It's recently been pushed to try and sell maybe the last remaining stock of what they have. This sort of is interesting and in what it do. I mean, it would be interesting to see what the Gloom Spike gets half of this would be. I would assume we're not going to go down the Squig route. And with the rumours that the new Warcry box set we've got coming, it may be containing Spider Fang, maybe we'll get some Spider Fang versus Beast of Chaos. Could be an interesting sort of dynamic for this box set. And so I did talk a little bit about it. Obviously, we've already talked about the Beast of Chaos, Maggot King, and Gloom Spike. Yes, all of these have potential battle tomes on the horizon. Um, for me, I do think that we're maybe going to see Beast of Chaos first. The Nurgle one maybe seems the mo least likely out of the two Chaos ones. I mean... We know that it is going to be one of those two next. We've been told that we've got a Chaos Battle Tome coming at the end of the year. Originally, it was planned for November. Obviously, we've had the current delays in Games Workshop, so maybe we won't see it until December. Potentially, we might not see it this year, and it may, in fact, be in January, early January next year, which, if that is the case, maybe it is Nurgle, if they're going to push it back to that, but I don't think... I think Nurgle would have been that early January Chaos release like we normally see, and we would have seen Beasts at the end of the year, much like we did previously with Beasts, so that sort of fit that right sort of army to be in there um but gloom spike obviously need a brand new battle tome as well they are probably the worst performing faction in warhammer age of sigma at the moment definitely need it beasts once again have needed it for a while maggie can just need the consolidation of a battle tome they've got rules in so many different places now that they just need that book but the interesting one here is ogres 
I was really excited. I haven't heard any rumors about ogres at all until this one. And so we'll talk about ogres a little bit more in a sec, but a new ogre battle tone would be really cool. Ogres are an army that has a very simple play style. They just sort of run forward and smash, and they do that one thing, and they do it well. There is obviously some tactical play to them, but I feel with Gargant sort of just taking their rule, and now the game sort of um, taking their general rule into general play, I do feel the Ogres need something, again, to make them a little bit more special than everyone else. Obviously, we could keep the whole sort of objective grabbing thing and making them count as more models. That certainly works on a lot of Ogre singers. There are only four wounds. However, I think that we need something more for Ogres to sort of bring that, uh, give them a unique identity once again. And so, speaking of Ogres, alongside that battle tome, it would seem we're going to get a new start collecting box set with a new hero model. Now, what this sort of talks to me about is that Ogres are going to be one of those armies that get sort of a splash release. Maybe we might see some endless spells for Ogres alongside them. They currently don't have any. We've already got a terrain feature for them, so we don't need that. Um, but we're going to see a new start collecting box with a new hero model. Um, I would assume this is going to be the only way you can get the hero model. We've obviously seen this sort of sales tactic with GW and how you buy old models to get the new one as well in the White King model that came out for Soulbike Gravelords. I have every suspicion that that would be the same way they do this. So, you know, that sort of starts to make me think that this one is has a little bit more validity to it because it's telling, sort of showing us how GW are doing these new sale practices with that. I mean, that's fine. I'm going to buy it anyway when it comes out. You know, I mean, that doesn't bother me, but it is how they seem to be doing it. Um, new hero model for me we've already got the star collecting beast claw raiders uh, this I think would definitely be a much more sort of uh, what is it gut buster side of the box um, and a new hero model maybe we'll get some sort of like man eater character would be a really cool addition um, but maybe also a new butcher or a new slaughter master model that's actually in plastic as well we've obviously seen the tyrant model updated so maybe instead of an actual brand new model um and a brand new like hero class itself maybe we'll see the butcher the hunter or the slaughter master updated into a new sculpt it'd be really cool to get a jewel kit between the butcher and slaughter master and a jewel kit would be a really cool sort of kit to get um but i definitely do think how they're doing models now they've got less jewel kits available in the game that we're going to see maybe one of those updated or indeed a brand new one and if it is a brand new one maybe a man eater character would be really cool as well or maybe something to go alongside the fire belly but i think if we're going to see fire bellies we'd see a whole range what's inside this particular star collecting box could be interesting um i think we'd see something very close to feast of bone so maybe an iron blaster scrap launcher kit along with some gluttons a couple of lead belches um but maybe taking the lead belches out of it now and replacing them with say uh something of equal value maybe you know a, and looking at star collecting boxes and how they're maybe not as once good value as they once were maybe we get a box of six guns an iron blaster and then the character model in there as well um and maybe if we're lucky something like uh a unit of four lead belchers or maybe even a unit of noblars or something like that Next, we have a new Ossiarch Bone Reapers Foot Hero and Mortech Archer rumors. Now, this one sort of, I guess, works for me, mainly because we've seen the Underworlds Warband sort of show off a couple of different things. So maybe we're going to get something like Kanan as a generic character version of him, so like a foot fighter Ossiarch hero. It's something we don't really have. We've obviously only got the Liege Cavalos, who's our only real fighty hero. Um, so maybe, you know, like that sort of six, five, seven wound sort of foot hero um that maybe give some buffs out to units maybe we'll see like a tallyman or something or a guide or something like that that helps these archers and so we get two units released alongside each other that actually work together well the archers obviously i think we're going to see mainly because we did see that archer the mortec archer in the warhammer underworlds warband this definitely seems like the right sort of path to go with for the ossiarch bone reapers seeing that sort of slight tomb kings inspiration they have uh you know, the two things for me that we are missing for the Ossiac Bone Reapers are chariots and archers, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a new Mortec archer kit come out very soon. Moving on to more new models, we've got the Slaves to Darkness, Chaos Warriors, Knights and Chosen apparently coming. Now, this one to me, I think we're not going to actually see new models for it. This would be Chaos Warriors and Knights from the Star Collecting Box released individually. Uh, what that means for the future of Chaos Warriors and Knights and their weapon options, I think we're going to see, you know, 
the removal of a lot of the other weapon options for me this with the stormcast battle time and how they sort of got rid of swords and hammers and all that sort of stuff i think we are going to see this as a common theme throughout armies of these options between two weapons removed and just the one singular profile so it won't actually affect any of your uh chaos warriors maybe we will see a two-hand weapon option on the uh warriors on foot maybe but i doubt it i think we're just going to see those same kits sort of released again um which will be interesting chosen would have to be a whole new kit and i would be amazed to see a new chosen kit um they really are cool models as they currently are but definitely need that updated kit so chosen would be a welcome surprise to see as a new model for me Luneth Realm Lords as well will see the next expansion of the army. Um, well, this maybe will be, will be, I guess, the River Temple. We've seen slight hints at what the River Temple is sort of all about uh, in the Underworlds Warband. We've got some, you know, move like the River Cards and stuff like that. And originally we thought the Swordmasters were going to be the River Temple. They turned out just to be, I guess, very basic uh, of the troops, the Venari troops, but you know, maybe that's an idea of where we're going to go next. We've seen a lot more river influence stuff than we have of the Zenith stuff yet. And I do think we're going to leave Zenith for last. It just makes sense. Uh, there's definitely been no rumor though of a Tyrian model. So maybe that's what gets me thinking river more that we're going to see river first. And then we'll see Zenith with Tyrion at the end of that. Once we finally see the Zenith at the end. And now let's talk about the three new armies. First of all, we got Dawnbringer Crusades. This apparently is going to be an update to the Cities of Sigmar, the new sort of look for them. Uh, obviously, if you've read the Dominion novel by Darius Hinks, you'll have read a little bit about what a Dawnbringer Crusade is. Effectively, Crusades going out into the realms and settling new areas of the mortal realms. They're really, really cool. They carry these giant metalifts, which are these giant floating mountains you can see here in this one, uh, with giant sort of steam engine cog forts in them, hundreds of thousands of just humans along with Stormcast, Caradron, and all manner of people just going out and settling and sort of pushing back the tide of destruction, death, and chaos in the mortal realms. What this means for Sigis of Sigma, who knows? Maybe we'll see some more model rangers retired, especially with the army we'll talk about next. But for me, you know, whatever this brings, I'm excited for it. This is my favorite sort of theme in Age of Sigma. I love the whole underdog feel that uh, Sigis of Sigma and probably what Dawnbringer Crusades will have in the future. And speaking of that other faction, Umbraneth, this is, of course, going to be what we think, at least, Malarian's faction. So, Umbraneth are the Shadow Elves, uh, the sort of shadowy, uh, I guess, when Malarian sort of first finds Marathi, she's consorting with Shadow Demons. And so, maybe Malarian is doing something with that as well, where he's not quite... Um, a sort of corporeal form is this shadowy creature. We've obviously got that first amazing piece of artwork of him. Um, and we've seen other things of Umbraneth. Obviously, we've seen uh, the Canite Shadowstalkers referred to as Umbraneth. We've seen uh, some of the other things referred to as Umbraneth as well. Things like the Tenembril Shard and the uh, the other model that came in Warhammer Quest. The name completely eluding me now. The Tenembril Shard. Uh and the Mistwe Sire are the two I'm trying to think of. But, um, yeah, what this means, maybe we might see a few of the Dark Elf models removed from the range. Um, things like my beloved Scourge Privateers. But then again, a lot of those have their place. I mean, Scourge have been such a massive part. Maybe we'll actually see them more moved into um, a future Daughters of Cain book rather than actually removed or kept as part of the Dawnbringer Crusades. I don't know what's going to happen there. Lastly, though, probably the most interesting one, and one I think everyone has sort of suspected, is Oathbreakers, New Chaos Dwarves. Um, this is a really interesting one. It, the rumor does go into them being Chaos Dwarves, so they're not a destruction-focused dwarf faction if these rumors are true. I just think Chaos Dwarves deserve a full range. They were that army that also almost always were maybe that little bit too mechanical for fantasy. I don't know. They didn't quite feel like they fit. Um, but anyway, I like them. And I feel they just fit into Age of Sigma that much more than they ever did into Fantasy, which is really interesting. And so seeing their range removed from Forge World, despite being maybe the only Age of Sigma range Forge World properly had, and seeing them maybe pop up in a full plastic reimagined line would be amazing. I'd love to see Oathbreakers come out. Um, all three of these really excite me. They're all ones that I'm definitely interested in. So it'd be really interesting to see where we go with all of these. And so lastly, a little bit of narrative. Spoiler, if you don't want, please don't listen any further, but, you know, a little bit of narrative. Apparently the 
Oathbreaker's Couch Dwarves make a giant cannon that shoots open the gates of Azir so Archaon can get in and Azir is finally tainted. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel the best part about Age of Sigmar is that Azir is this hopeful beacon and hopefully that is how it stays. Um, I don't mind a fight on Azir, but I don't want Azir to fall. It is really, for me, the big sort of part of narrative that sets Age of Sigmar apart from something like 40k, where is it, there is this big beacon of hope. Um, so it'd be interesting to see where we go with this narrative. But that's all the rumors that have come out in the past few days. I've been waiting for them all to simmer down to sort of give my idea and my thoughts on them. So I'd love to know what all your thoughts are. What do you want? What do you not want to see out of this? What are you hoping for if you do see these? And new battle tomes, what are you hoping for for the ones that may be getting updated? Let us know in the comments below. Well, that's the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to, you can come over and chat more with us here at Sinful Gaming and our fine little community over on Discord. You'll find a link to that Discord in the description of the video. Lastly, we'd like to give a shout out to everyone who helps support the channel via Patreon and YouTube members. And if you'd like to help support the channel via Patreon or YouTube members, you can do so by one of the links in the video's description once again. But a special shout out to all our patrons, Christian Weir, James, Soren, Chaos Spawn, AJC, Kenny Lyle, Outer and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Agu, Anthony B, and Dinah226. And another special shout out to our YouTube members, Green Ridge Gaming, Kenton Young, Steve for T, The Real Zeo, Chris Wallace, Turo12, Vinny, Lock Lorik, Matt Mollin, Becca Kinski Groupie, and The Johnny84. And lastly, a definite special shout out, first of all, to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for the channel, and to X Morphic, who does all the background work for our Discord server, keeping everything there running smoothly, because I am completely computer illiterate. Thank you very much. But that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe again. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.